This is what we got today, guys. All kinds of bars. We are talking protein bars today. Boom, boom. Some of these are just crazy. We went to GNC yesterday thinking we'd get like five or six bars to compare. Turns out there's like 37 different low carb yeah. bars now. We've gotten to the point where we're labeling them grenade carb killer. <laughs> so I wanted to do an in-depth analysis on the actual effective net carbs in these bars because they're obviously lying to you. If it sounds and tastes too good to be true, it probably is. Exactly. It's like the parsnip chips. There, there's no free passes. There's no supplement that puts you into ketosis in under an hour after a cheat meal. Yeah. All of these bars draw on the powers of certain fiber supplements. There's a bunch of different ones and sugar alcohols. Those mm -hmm. are the two major components that are subtracting from the carb counts. Right. You got your fibers and your sugar alcohols. Basically, I think at the end we'll summarize with just like, which ones am I comfortable eating? Like green light, yellow light, red light type of thing. That's a great deal because there's 12 here. So it's probably very difficult to sort through for just anyone. And even yeah. for us, like I look at the packaging, I buy it, I eat it. But in actuality, that's not how it should be done. So first off, let's touch on some of these hard to pronounce things that are in these bars. The big one, IMO syrup, isomalto oligosaccharides, I think it's pronounced. This is the one that Quest bars originally started with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these bars still currently use. IMO originally was thought to be like completely indigestible fiber but it was tested in like different circumstances. But when they actually got to like human testing, they realized it's partially digested. And that's the reason Quest is like in a big lawsuit right now mm -hmm. about mislabeling their products. The fiber counts way off, it shouldn't all be subtracted, but a lot of these bars are still using it. Based on a few studies, I'm gonna link a bunch of studies in the description of this. You should count about 50% of the carbs that are listed as fiber if it's IMO. Yeah, and that really throws you off in terms of your macros. Big Time. If you eat one, maybe even two, like if you're road tripping, you think it's good. And it also has a 35 glycemic index, so relatively high. It's basically malitol, like yeah. com comparable to malitol, which is like the unwanted stepchild of sugar alcohols. The second thing is soluble corn fiber. This is what's in the new Quest formula. Yep. It's way cheaper than IMO syrup. It's also a lot of the time genetically modified, so you probably have certain issues with that. And it changes, it changes the overall texture of the bar. Changes the texture, probably not as tasty. There's no like actual scientific data on it. It's all funded by the corn industry because it's like a huge industry in the United States. So you're getting like mixed up with that. You can't get accurate information on it, but I've seen like hundreds of blood glucose and ketone meter people testing like mm -hmm the IMO bar versus the corn fiber bar. Pretty much across the board, the corn fiber bar has almost no impact and the IMO bar has a large impact. In calculating the actual carbs in these, you kind of have to just like come up with a value for these in your head. Right. So for the corn fiber, it seems to have really low impact, but I'm gonna chalk it up as like 10%. You should probably count 10% of those carbs. This is just me throwing a number on something. So if you guys have better guesses for that number and reasoning why, let me know below. For the IMO, we're going with 50%. Then you have a couple of just other fibers that aren't really used that much, but they're thrown in there. There's chicory root fiber, polydextrose, tapioca fiber, and glycerin, which is like a vegetable-based fiber. Mm -hmm. All of those are pretty much fully subtracted or like a 10% count towards the carbs. Okay. And then the sugar alcohols. So maltol is one of those sugar alcohols we come across often when looking at like candies, like Russell Stover's candy. All the sugar-free candies contain malitol, unfortunately. There is 2.4 calories per gram, and then it also has a 35 to 60, somewhere in that range glycemic index. 35 is just like raw malitol. It can get up to like 65 if you're talking like the malitol concentrated syrup, which is what a lot of Adkins products use. So if you're looking at malitol, you would also be looking at it as 50, counting 50%, erythritol, which we use often, zero glycemic index, 0.2 calories per gram. So unless you're using it in extreme bulk, which most of the time you're not, you can pretty much chalk it up to zero. A decent percentage of these contain sucralose. It's totally subtracted. It's something I would prefer not to see on the label, but it's not a huge deterrent for me. The newest thing on the scene that I've, I'm seeing in the bars lately is allulose, mainly the new Quest bars. And 
I did a bunch of research to kind of figure it out. On these hero bars, they actually have like a little crash course on allulose right on it. That's cool. And it's actually pretty cool. So the whole game with all this stuff is just like getting something that tastes super good and sweet. Right. So on your tongue, it's sugar basically, but it isn't digested like sugar. It passes through your small intestine without getting digested. So this is not a sugar alcohol. It's a rare sugar, which I've never heard until of this. It's just like something that's rarely found in nature. Humans can't digest it, but it tastes very sweet. Hmm. So it seems to be like an awesome thing from everything I've read. We've started to push away from them. We actually all together, we don't eat these. Don't eat them. We get our protein from animal protein, um, from anything else except protein bars. But we started eating these a lot. Yeah, we did. And we have a lot of time now. We cook, we're always cooking for the food blog and stuff. So obviously we have time to cook. Right. If you don't have time to cook, there's a bunch of these that are decent options. Mm -hmm. Obviously not great options, but they're decent. A lot of people need the convenience, need the on the go. So let's go through them. Yes. Well, I'll try to make this quick. There's a lot of info here though. So we're gonna start with Chef Robert Irvine. Uh, he has a Fit Elite bar here. Well, he's, he's really jacked. He is jacked. <laughs> okay, another thing when you're figuring for these bars is it doesn't list quantities. It just lists the ingredients in order. So I'm just kind of doing some deductive reasoning. Like if the IMO syrup is listed first and then corn fiber is listed second, I'm just going to kind of assign a ratio in my head. Like right. maybe eight grams IMO fiber, five grams corn fiber. That's really the only way to do it. You can't actually know. So these are rough estimates. Just whatever first, whatever comes first in the ingredient list, there's the most of that. Yep. All right. So with these, it's mostly IMO syrup. There is a lot of vegetable fiber in it though, glycerin. What they're claiming on the bar is uh, four net carbs. Our calculations is more like nine and a half net carbs. And another thing you wanna consider when eating these bars is they're also super high protein and a lot mm -hmm. of them are super low fat. Yes. So it's like... They're not ideal for a keto diet. No. Or a low carb diet, ideally. Yeah, like maybe if you're eating these post-workout with another fat source, that's fine. But like just the amount of carbs plus the high protein, it's kind of trouble for keto. So next on the list, we have the no cow bars. These were actually Matt and my favorite bars yeah. in terms of texture, deliciousness. So the first ingredient on this list um, in terms of sugars is the IMOs. No cow bars claim to be four grams net carb, says it right on the front. Most will say it right on the front. That's a big selling point. From our calculations though, we found that this bar actually contains 10.7 net carbs. So like this isn't the same situation as the Trader Joe's parsnip chips video we did linked above, where it's like they're just lying to you and cheating the system. This is kind of cheating the system, but- It's a loophole. It's a loophole, but it is actually like dietary fiber. It's just partially digested. Quest cereal bars. Yum. So in my opinion, Quest is doing, like they're on the right track. Now. They used the IMO, they corrected. Right. And now they're using soluble corn fiber and allulose, two like good- Options. Good options. I don't know if corn fiber is like a good option, but as far as its impact on your blood glucose, it's a good option. So these are basically, you can just take them for face value. Uh, exactly what they're saying on the label. Nice. We're using a 10% value for the corn fiber, just slightly over what they say. They claim three net carbs. We're gonna say this is 3.6 net carbs. So next we have the Quest Hero Bars. These are the newest bars that Quest has put out. We've never tried them. No, we haven't. Um, and we've heard amazing things. These use the corn, soluble corn fiber and now the allulose. So it claims to be four net carbs, which most of the Quest bars are four to five in mm -hmm. that area. So in actuality, we're counting it as five net carbs. One word of caution with this is when you start pushing like 30 total carbs and then you're trying to just subtract down, like that's just crazy. Really trying. Yeah. A lot of the fiber supplements that are in these have like FDA regulations, like under 30 grams a day. Right. Certain things like that. Like these are, these are just really pushing the limit. Like 30 yeah. is a lot. But these should be fine as part of a keto diet. I'd probably recommend eating like half of one of those. The next one is a normal Quest bar. This one is claiming four net carbs. Basically, it's just all corn fiber and erythritol. So just add a little bit on for the corn fiber. 
I would count these as 5.4 net carbs. Next, we have this. I've never seen this before. The best protein bar. Me neither. And looking at it, I'm like, this is going to be super high and yeah. kind of scary. So it, the bar claims six net carbs. It is, however, using IMOs. Also, it, it throws a little surprise in there, Melitol. Six net carbs, it's claiming. We've calculated it out to about 14.6. So don't eat these. Stay away. Muscle Tech Mission 1. These are ones I think we've had before and yeah. I think they're like relatively prominent in the keto community. These just have so many crazy ingredients in them. It's hard to like really know what's going on. Canola oil, soybean oil, four different types of fiber sources. The mm. first one listed is IMO fiber. Uh, they're claiming five net carbs. I'm going to mark it an 11 net carbs. Tough to really figure that one out because you don't know what balance the fiber blend is in there since they just use every one they could get their hands on. So next we have this gourmet cheesecake protein bar. This was a surprise because looking at it, you're like, this is just going to be Atkins bars. Yeah. It has really good ingredients actually. Yeah. And we've had these before. Don't taste horrible. They're pretty good. So. And when I say really good ingredients, that's relative to protein bars. This bar is claiming it's six net carbs, and to our calculations, given the ingredients, we also claim six, six net, net carbs. carbs. It uses tapioca fiber. Um, so these are a little bit like we're bending the rules because these are designed for keto. They're not yes. really like store-bought protein bars. We'll link these below, though. They're keto bars, and these are just good stuff, super high fat, not high protein, and they claim to be two grams of net carbs, and they are two grams of net carbs. The ingredients are legit. They're like vacuum sealed for freshness because they don't like have a bunch of preservatives and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they taste real. They're like chocolate coconut. You can taste the coconut, dark chocolate. So then we have the Oh Yeah One Bars, which I'm a huge fan of. People love these. Yeah, they're really good. Great texture, like a crispiness. Yeah, but there's not that good, st good of stuff in it. It's IMO and glycerin, which IMO, as you know, is not the best. Um, so it claims... Does it say on the front? Four net carbs, but given the IMO and the glycerin in the ingredients, we've put this at. Well, there's actually 10 grams of malitol in it as well. So, jeez. Yeah, these are really bad. <laughs> I mean. So, yeah, that puts our calculations at 12.4 net carbs. Two more. Oh, I get the honor of doing the grenade carb killer. This one is claiming two net carbs. It has a ton of malitol in it, 11 grams. The fiber is polydextrose, which is vegetable derived. Uh, you can pretty much subtract that. The overall net carbs on this, which is not as bad as I was expecting, mm -hmm. is 8.2 grams. And this one is the biggest surprise of them all, guys. So these are the Atkins bar, not the ones you like normally see. These are the lift ones, mm -hmm. which I've never seen. So the other Atkins bars have primarily melatol. Primarily, but I think they're starting to switch it up a little bit. It um, uses soluble corn fiber. It uses glycerin and some sucralose is also in there. Um, and it claims four net carbs. To our calculations, we would put this at six net carbs. Not terrible. And, you know, when you think of Adkins at this point, you're thinking just like malatol bomb, tons of, you know, undesirable stuff in there. This bar is actually like pretty legit. Yeah. They have good ingredients, like for a protein bar. They're all their ingredients fit on two lines. They have like some coconut oil. They're not really like hitting you with soybean oil and all this stuff. Like, they just really shot themselves in the foot with the first set of bars. So now no one like wants the, to even look at Atkins. The first thirty years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these are a huge surprise to me. These are I would eat this. Okay. So what? Yeah, that comes down to we've given you all the numbers. What would we eat? So we were originally going to do a green, yellow, red light spectrum to give you an idea of what to eat, maybe what to eat, what not to eat, but... There really is no yellow lights. Yeah. It's either green or red. Will you or won't you? So this is just us. Like, this is what I'm comfortable eating and what I would not eat. What we would eat. What we would eat first. Keto bars. Definitely. Hands That's down. my number one pick. It's a little bit of a different category, though, in my opinion. The Quest bars. We'd eat all the Quest Bars. I would say probably original is where you want to go. And then the if Hero. You, and then Cereal. And then Cereal. Okay. Lift per Atkins Bar. Surprisingly. Yeah. This was the biggest surprise to me. They're doing some things over there. They actually have like a decent, like health, relatively healthy, low carb. 
right. protein bar. This cheesecake bar we've had once before. Very unassuming, but yeah. it's not bad. And then what you should not, you should stay away from if you can help it. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys are into these one bars now. I would stay away. Melatol, IMO syrup, it's just a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. That's a stay away from me. Then the Fit Elite bars, we've seen these go around. Just because a chef condones these <laughs> and he's jacked doesn't mean you should eat them. The Carb Killer, this is the closest one to being a green. I think you can fit this in if you want to really badly. I don't see why you need to though when you have Quest Bars and stuff. It does have Malitol though. It has Malitol, that's the downside. Be weary. Then there's the No Cow Bars, sadly. I would say that's also like- Maybe. In the in the yellow light category, just because it has really good ingredients. It just uses, like if they switched to corn fiber, this would be a- This would be a green. But see, they're going for more of like the non-GMO gluten-free like yeah gluten -free okay. so most of the corn fiber is genetically modified that's one thing to note this one's really bad just not good ingredients and Terrible high carb packaging. it claims to be six grams of net carbs already which so is high which is high yeah. yeah stay away and then the mission elites also stay away we've had these um not even that great tasting no but yeah definitely a red light for us yep I'd recommend you just going with Quest Bars because anywhere you, you can find like this type of stuff, you can find Quest Bars basically. Yeah, right? exactly. Hopefully we can return those like six that we want. We can. Eat. The guy said we could. Exactly. Let us know if you have contradicting information. I comb the internet as hard as possible, but let me know what you guys think of this and if you have any reasons why you think our calculations are off. Bye. If you don't know, now you know.